Over the last few weeks, I've shown you how to concrete in fence posts. I've even shown you how to build a garden gate. But for my regulars, that's not enough. They've said, Stuart, you can't keep us hanging. What about the rest of the fence? What about the connections? And especially, what about the lock to the gate? So to wrap this whole little project up and keep everyone happy, I'm now going to show you all the bits you haven't seen before. Now roll the intro. Between my garage and my house, I have this gap that leads directly round the back of my house and onto my garden. It's just yearning to be filled with a fence and a gate for privacy and security. So I started by lifting the paving slabs that will inevitably end up underneath this fence, which turned out to be a lot easier than I thought it was going to because of the lack of proper foundation and sub-base and primer. Anyway, let's move on. I also had to remove some turf which took me down to topsoil. So after my plant in the laurels video, some people did ask what type of soil I've got in the garden. At that stage I didn't know, I thought it was more like a sandy but maybe loamy type soil. But I can now clarify that it's actually mainly brick with just a touch of plastic. I also removed a 600 by 600 paver where one of the posts is going to go by my stitch drilling method, which debonded from the concrete below before I'd even finished. This is where having an SDS drill with a breaker function really comes in handy. I use a simple string line along the front of my garage so I can line up one side of the fence exactly parallel with it. I did the same for the front of the house and these two lines intersect each other around about 120 degrees. Two of the shorter 1.8 metre fence posts will be bolted to walls, one at each end, one to the house and one to the garage, leaving the longer 2.7 metre posts to be concreted into the ground. For neatness, I wanted the Aris rails to be flush with these posts, so I decided to notch the posts so they accepted these rails. Notching these is quicker and more accurate if you're doing a number of them all lined up at the same time. As soon as I started cutting, I very quickly found out that these posts were so wet with the tantalising type treatment that my battery powered DeWalt circular saw was going to eat through more batteries than I had charged. So I swapped to my vintage skill saw. I've just finished notching out for these Aris rails on these four posts. I've done the very top one and I've done the middle one. I've just come down to the bottom to, to do the bottom section here. Now for these two short posts, these are the ones that are going to get bolted to the walls. So I have no problem with cutting it out in the same way and making this flush to this because it's not going to structurally, it's not going to make any difference. However, these two longer posts, these are the ones that are going to get concreted into the ground. This section gets concreted into the ground and this is a section sticking up in the air. And if I notch out for this Aris rail here, I essentially have to take away about 50% of the post all the way through, which means its, it's ability to stand up in the wind is going to be greatly reduced. In a heavy wind or storm, what we call the bending moment, which is that sort of ability to like snap a twig, is going to be worst and concentrated at the bottom of the fence, just above the foundation. So the last thing I really should be doing is taking away 50% of the timber. So what I will be doing is, for this Aris rail, just making a bit of a notch here so it can sit maybe 10 or 15 millimetres into this post. It's got somewhere to fix to. But that also means that I keep around about 80% of the material on this side of the post, which means hopefully this isn't going to snap like a twig in the first wind. To create this smaller notch, I marked and then cut the perimeter of the Aris rail using a chisel and then use my Katsu router just to freehand cut the slot about 12 millimetres deep, as close as I could to the chisel line, which I then tidied up by hand. At 
At this point, I also drilled the holes and counterbore in the posts that are going to be screwed to the walls. All of these cut sections on these treated posts, I gave a couple of coats of sealer to, including the longer feather edge boards, which I had to cut to make the gate. If you want to see the process of how to concrete in the posts, please see my how to dig, set and concrete in fence post video, which goes through the whole process from start to finish. Now, for those of you left that haven't just disappeared to see how to concrete in fence posts, it's a good time for me to tell you that once again, this video is being sponsored by ITS for all the tools you need. Now, if you've been watching me for some time, you'll already know that ITS has a huge website full of power tools, workwear, electrical, gardening, and you'll already know that it's got over 19,000 five-star Trustpilot reviews, and it's got a price promise, which means I won't be beaten on price by Screwfix or Toolstation. You already know all of that. But what you might not know is that they've got a new section to their website called the Outlet Store. Come and have a look at this. The ITS Outlet Store is where their surplus stock of power tools, workwear, garden tools, and everything else sits on their website with some really great savings. I'm particularly impressed with their five pages of power tool deals. And what really caught my eye was this DeWalt brushless drill for less than £50, including VAT. As with everything, you get the next day delivery if you order before 7pm. And as usual, a free goodie bundle worth over £30 if you spend over £60 or more and use the code PROPERDIY. So I'd highly recommend checking out the ITS outlet store. They've got some really good deals on here, something for everyone. Anyway, you've got to get back to see the rest of my video and I've got to get on to buy a yellow drill. Just don't tell the wife, eh? After working out and marking exactly where this post was going to go against the house, I drilled the holes and used 10 millimeter concrete screws to fix it. Using these screws this time, I had to be really careful because behind this render is soft block work, which isn't nearly as strong as brick. So to help out, I added more fixings to this post and I had to be really careful I didn't over tighten them because I could feel that if I put any more force on the ratchet arm, I could just strip out the thread in the soft block. With the notches already in the posts, it makes it really simple to fix the arras rails in the right position. There's only one place for them to go. Except for this little corner, which I had to do a bit of playing around to make it look right, because it's not at 90 degrees. The bottom arras rail also supports the gravel board, as well as the bottom 20-30mm of each feather edge board. I set up my laser level along roughly the centre of the middle arras rail. This is a good example of where I'm using my laser level really as a spirit level rather than an absolute datum. Marking the arras rail means I've got the same level around the whole fence within a millimetre or so. I could then measure down from these marks and fix the position of the gravel board from one end to the other. With the gravel board in place, it makes it really easy to sit the bottom of the feather edge boards onto it. Using a spacer, I could then fix the boards with a 25mm overlap on each. After fixing these boards top and bottom with a single screw in each, so it's got the ability to expand and contract, I came back later to do the same for the centre rail. Once the fence was up, I could concentrate on the gate. If you want to see how I made the gate from start to finish, then please see my garden gate video of a few weeks ago. So the last thing I've got to do, which is traditional, is to fit the lock onto the gate. And I couldn't fit the lock onto the gate in the video where I made the gate because the lock was just not available. So finally, I got it through Amazon because no one else had exactly the one I wanted. And I've gone for this fairly chunky lock from Gatemate, although when it turned up from Amazon, it actually says it's come from Perry. So I don't know if Perry's taken over Gatemate or it's a different company or whatever, but it's exactly what I ordered. And Gatemate also do a lo load of furniture for gates as well. Uh, this handle here, you can see, fits perfectly over the lock on the outside. So the lock I've gone for has got a lock on the outside, which I get five keys for and a simple push button on the inside. If you push the button, the bar slides across and then locks in place. So, which means that 
if someone climbed over the top of the fence and reached down, they could actually push the button and gain entry. But if they're, if they're that far into the property anyway, all they all have to do is jump off the gate and they're inside. You can get different configurations of this where you get a lock on both sides and all kinds of different types, but this is really the one that I want. Also, you can get different length shafts. I initially got the 50 millimeter long shaft and that turned out to be too short, it wasn't going to come through my timber and my feather edge. So I've gone from the 70 millimeter long, which might be a little bit too long, but I have no other choice. So the biggest challenge with this is that I have to fit it onto the gate. And on the other side of the gate, I've got my feather edge clad in. Now, the problem with that is as it comes through perpendicular to one side of the feather edge, it means that this handle here, I really want square to the lock that's coming through and if I don't do anything about it it's all going to be slightly on the skew. So what I'm going to do is with one of the, these offcuts I'm going to orientate it 180 degrees and glue and screw it to the front face of the door which means that this face is now parallel to the outside face which means that the lock should come through nice and square and this should be perpendicular to the lock. Now I don't know if these will take wood glue because they're treated but I'm going to give it a go anyways, put plenty of glue on it, clamp it nice and tight, put a few screws in. So if the wood glue doesn't take, at least I've got the screws. So let's give it a go. The top of the off cut, I cut with a 20 degree bevel angle. And after a bit of trimming, I glued and screwed it to the front edge of the gate where the lock and the handle will go. I also had to add an additional piece of timber to the frame on the back side of the gate as the width of the lock and its offset from the edge of the door is more than the 89mm CLS timber I used on the frame. I glued and screwed this in and then gave it a coat of my standard oak stain just to match the rest of the door. So now I've got a bit of a dilemma because if I put the cylinder and the lock in the right place as it would normally go on the frame then this handle ends up off-center on this section which really doesn't look right at all and if I put this in the middle and make this look right then structurally the lock isn't as strong as it sh could be. Why do you always get this in DIY? Nothing is ever as straightforward as you think it's going to be. I think I'll have to set it in the middle to make it look right even if it's not quite as strong as it could be. Now this lock needs a 26 millimeter hole cut for the cylinder, which I thought I had, but obviously I didn't after lots of searching and only finding 25 millimeter flat bits. I had to admit defeat and take a quick trip down to the local DIY shop. Once I did cut the hole, it fitted in quite nicely. The rest of the installation was really very simple, just using some pilot holes and the screws provided. I finished off by once again staining all of the cut edges with my primary school paintbrush to match the colour of the gate. So there you have it, the gate and the fence is 100% complete, including the lock on the gate as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please check out the other ones on my channel and please subscribe. So until next time, I'll see you then. Han, Claire,